Good morning, good morning, happy Tuesday. Michelle Lee here, as you may know. If you don't know, I have been a women's empowerment coach and now spiritual coach for almost two decades in supporting women in embracing their power and embracing their spirituality. And yesterday I was talking about the um, cult leader, Lawrence Ray. There's a Netflix documentary out and it's fascinating. Power of the Mind is absolutely fascinating. And I promised to share with you a little bit more today around the idea of power. Because if there's anything we see in all of the cults, it's the placement of power of one person or a few people. And what everyone else does inside the cult is relinquish their power. And in my decades of coaching people, and especially coaching women, good morning, Jamie, so good to see you. Happy Valentine's Day to you, is um, the fear of power, right? Like humanity has a massive love affair with abuse of power, with power over um, other people. And so that makes, um, that can really scare people in embracing their power because incarnating on the planet of duality, we are of course going to have power and powerlessness. And we're going to have the ability to overpower, take, um, take, um, God, advantage of those that we may see as powerless. And this is one of the biggest mistakes that I see people make is the fear of power, having the fear of power, not trusting themselves to um, not abuse their power, not, oh, and, and another big one is what will people think of me, right? We tend to, humans tend to resent powerful people, um, basically because we have seen, we haven't seen any good examples of empowerment. And so we tend to um, really live at the opposite ends of duality. And uh, there's those that have the power and love the power and love the control. And then there's those people who go, I don't want to be anything like that person. Um, say hello when you tune in. Let me know where you're tuning in from. Thank you for joining. I don't want to be anything like that person. I don't want to um, anybody to think I'm even like that person, right? So there's this total rejection of power. But power is our divine right. And power isn't just left to power over people. So how you identify true power is when you feel empowered in the presence of that individual, right? A truly empowered person does not have to exert power over anyone in any way. Good morning, Yukti. So good to see you. A truly empowered person, empowered, power from within, is a, a person who does not have to exert any power, whether by force or by words, cutting people down or showing off. Um, an empowered person doesn't need to do any of that. And, and with an empowered person, you actually feel empowered. Um, emp empowered individuals um, empower others. They help others to see, oh, you have this innate power. You have that innate power. So how do you become an empowered person? Well, we talked about, talked about a little bit yesterday about becoming the authority over your own mind, right? Creating a, a recording about what you want to know, journaling, getting intimate with your 
self, which is the most important thing we can do in any lifetime is to know thyself. When we know ourselves, we're then able to work with ourselves and become empowered. So number one way to look at power and how to embody more of your power is to first recognize how you relinquish your power. Because every moment in every day, we're offered opportunities to relinquish our power. One of the most common ways to, that um, we relinquish our, our power is by the weather right? Um, oh, here we're under a winter snowstorm today. So it is laying down some major snow. Now, if you're somebody who only likes sunny days, you might think today is a crappy day and you feel low energy, you feel whatever, you're rejecting the weather. That I just, if, if you're one who does that, I'm happy when the sun shines, I'm unhappy when it doesn't, then you have relinquished your power to an outside experience. Um, another good example, I remember years ago, I was taking my youngest son to grab a Subway sandwich on the way to school. Good morning, Heather, so good to see you. And we walked in, it was early, Subway just opened, and um, the one worker there didn't greet us, she didn't smile, and I was so pissed off right i was so angry like this is lousy customer service it's her job to smile at me and be friendly and then i got to thinking wait i i am now pissed off because somebody didn't treat me how i think they should right so i relinquished my power to her uh her actions or non-actions but luckily i thought of it quick enough i was like oh wait I have the I don't I have the power to make her day. I have the power to greet her and help her be in a happier mood. And so that's how you, that's how you switch it. Are you being the victim of circumstances? That's how we give our power away, right? Um, or are you being at cause instead of thinking she owed me something because of her job? I then shifted it going, wait, I'm a joyful person. I'm a peaceful person. I don't wait for somebody to play a part and then judge them, right? I was working with a client recently and she was saying, um, I'm doing all this work manifesting and being in a high vibe and, and my boyfriend, he just drags me down. I'm so frustrated and angry. I can't manifest anything until he gets positive, right? Until he's positive, until he's working with me to manifest. It's another way we relinquish our power, right? I need, so, I need a circumstance, I need a person to be different in order for me to be happy, joyful, for in order for me to be authentic. I can't be authentic around inauthentic people. That's another good one, right? So that is one way to reclaim, that, that is number one way to reclaim your power is to recognize what little tiny ways are you giving your power away in every moment, right? Another, another one, um, which I just experienced last week was, um, I spent an hour and a half on the phone with tech support for my printer only to, um, it not be repaired. There's, they sent me another printer, but it was like 90 minutes. I just felt drained. Right. And I succumbed to it. I, uh, instead of going, it's like when you get into that energy, right? It's easier to go, oh, I'm just going to sit on the couch and read or whatever, right? And just screw today. I'm just going to relax the rest of the day, whatever. And so the day after, after, actually after the day was over, I was like, wow, I really could have reclaimed my power. I really could have changed my state. But the truth was there was an aspect of me that was really enjoying just letting the day go, right? There was that shadow side. And that is the, a, a huge piece of really embodying all of your power is to understand that 
there's a shadow side of us, an unseen side of us, but and that's what I mean by shadow is that unseen part of us who also likes to have power over others. Um, and if I, any of you think about it, any time where you enjoyed having power over somebody, maybe you were a kid, maybe um, it was last week, maybe it was yesterday, maybe it was with your partner where you were so angry and you said a hurtful thing because then you felt powerful again, right? You got, somebody responded to you. And oftentimes when we are in a space of powerlessness, we will retreat to those um, ways of reclaiming our power that often in the moment hurt the person. You know, we may not be power hungry like some people in politics or anything like that. We may not go to that extreme, but there is always that, that little part of us, that shadow side that we don't want to look at, that we don't want to see that enjoys power over others. And um, when you embrace that side of you, when you go, oh, I am capable of that. As humans, we are dual duality beings and we are capable of, we are all capable of the darkest actions as well as the lightest actions. And when we try to just stay on the light side, and we ignore that dark side, we can't truly be empowered because we're ignoring that dark side of us, which means we fear it. And we're not empowered um, if we're so fearful that we're not willing to look at something. I hope this makes sense. I know it, it goes kind of deep, um, but my point is, is that shadow work, shadow work is required for you to be fully empowered. It's unifying both sides of yourself. Our, our ego, when we come into this body, we have that ego and the ego says, I am this, I am this, I am that. You actually become the identity of who you are. I am Michelle Lee and the ego goes, I am not that. I am not a power hungry person. I am not a mean person. I am not a bully, right? But if, in, but if I'm willing to really look out, oh, I, I can be a bully sometimes, especially when I feel powerless. Um, I do like to feel powerful over somebody else. Then I have control and I don't have to be afraid anymore. I'm not afraid that I'll get hurt anymore, right? If you're willing to look at those pieces and even embrace those pieces and love that side of yourself that can get so scared that um that your survival it's kind of like like when you're drowning if if you're drowning in a lake and you you don't know how to swim and you're drowning someone jumps in after you your survival instincts will kick in and you will climb on top of the person who came to save you it's no different with these shadow pieces right these shadow pieces are like what my survival is um, threatened and that part of your brain kicks in. But what, what you truly want is to survive and who can you, who can you blame for having that survival instinct? So it's so important to look at those shadow sides and be willing to love that aspect of yourself. That aspect of yourself is just frightened, a frightened little child. And that's when you can truly be fully empowered when um, you, you can, when you are willing to go, oh, I am capable of that in a perfect storm, right? I am capable, capable of doing that. And I can't expect other people to treat me a certain way so then I can have a good day, whatever that is. So that is the biggest thing is being afraid of our own power for fear that we will misuse it. So I invite you to look at the ways you have misused your power and love that aspect of you. And if you're watching this um, on replay, please post hashtag replay. If you have any questions, any, any fears, what, what scares you the most to look at that shadow side? Um, you know, one of the things people say 
it, you hear people say, oh, I could never do that. I would never do that. That's how you know an unconscious person because quite, quite truly, as humans, we are capable of it all. We are absolutely capable of it all. Um, yeah, Heather says you have to do your shadow work before you move forward. You have to get in touch with yourself, all aspects of yourself, right? Not denying any piece of yourself. Denying any piece of yourself leads to, it's part of the four core wounds where I talk about shame and guilt, right? It, it holds you, it keeps you stuck in time. Mwah. So that's it for today. I would love to hear your thoughts, your experiences, your fears, your ahas, all of it in the comments below. And I will be back tomorrow. Have an awesome Tuesday. If you're in Northern Arizona, stay warm. Bye for now.